are very lucky to be joined by Everton winger Andros Townsend this morning on the show. It's been wonderful so far. We've only been on for, what, an hour and a bit, an hour and a half, something like that? Yep. And already, or is it two hours? No, yeah, an hour and a half. Uh, already <laughs> given us some, some great nuggets of information. So we're going to draw even more out of you, Andros, if you don't mind, if that's all right with you. Because uh, you've been in many football dressing rooms. Uh, we want your insight into how certain situations could be dealt with. Here's the first one. Liverpool, by their own standards, have had a, a pretty poor start to the season. They currently sit mm-hmm. eighth. Virgil van Dijk hasn't shown his, his usual form that we're used to. Um, and it's not just him, really. He is coming under some criticism. But there are other factors in that back four and, and beyond that perhaps are just not clicking like they used to. As a teammate, how would you deal with this? Would you criticise one of your top players? Would you be able to do that? Or... Would they have had a conversation with each other and said, what's up? Like, how do we all get better? Um, I think you only really criticise a teammate if it's down to effort or if he's uh, not pulling his weight. I I think if you're not performing well and you're trying your hardest, I don't think it's more of a constructive conversation as opposed to digging someone out. Um, I think the situation they're in now, it's more of a collective if, if I go back to last season and draw it to our own experiences at, at, at Everton, when we weren't doing well, it's, we had so many meetings called by the captain, Seamus, where it's right, right, lads, like, how can we how can we improve? We need to improve. We're better than this. You're better than this. You're better than this. How can we get ourselves out of the situation that we're currently in? And I'd imagine um, the same things will be going on in, in, in Liverpool's dressing room. Probably not as drastic because, like we, we said before, it is so early on in the season, but... I'm sure they'll be having these collective conversations, um, group conversations with just the players only to try and drag themselves out of the situation they're in. Mm. I was going to say to you, Andros, generally speaking, though, I would imagine it's the same now, but back in our, our day, the players would know themselves if they weren't playing well. I think you're spot on. Um, you leave yourself open to mm. totally deserved criticism if you're not pulling your weight or it is indeed a lack of effort. However, if it's a, a, a drop in form, which it certainly looks like with somebody like Van Dyke, you, the, the teammates, your teammates, and certainly the vast majority of the supporters will accept that. Okay, next yeah, one. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to answer. No, let's move on, let's move on. Let's okay. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> right, England announced their squad for the upcoming Nations League games. A few new faces in there. Ivan Tony got his first England call-up. Uh, ben White missed out on a place, which, uh, not just because I'm an Arsenal fan, but just generally, I think, I think he's been amazing, so that one surprised me a little bit. Andros, uh, you were called up to the England squad in 2013. What was the mm-hmm. process like? Where did you get the phone call? Was it a phone call? Was it a text? A letter? Um, it was a phone call. Um, I was just left the training ground um, and I got a phone call from our uh, like chief executive, sporting director at the time, can't remember his name, sorry, um, yeah. just to inform me that I had a big been impact selected. on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. He, he's just switched the radio. Oh, the one that's just switched the radio off. 81089, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> Make yourself known. <laughs> Did you expect the call, Andros? Were you like, yeah, I'm going to get the call? You know what? I've done interviews before and I've kind of said that, no, I didn't expect it. I thought it was a wind-up. You know, the usual yeah. crap that we say as footballers, but I generally did expect it. I was in such a good... <laughs> yeah. I was in such a great vein of form and my confidence was so high that um, I knew that I had a big chance of being in it. I think Roy Hodgson had been at our previous three games. So I knew I was, I was there or thereabouts, but to get the call from... Um, the gentleman whose name I don't recall um, <laughs> w- w- was a huge honour. Yeah. Andros, I was going to say to you, um, I take uh, Laura's point, perhaps Ben White was slightly unlucky, mm. but one person totally deserves it. I'm sure you'll agree. Ivan Tony, he's, mm. he, he's, been, he, he's, been, he's been he's been terrific for a, for a, a period now, but even his start to the season has been exceptional. Yeah, he has, not I, I was with him briefly at, at Newcastle. I think he'd, he'd gone oh, out on loan yeah. to maybe of course, of North. Course. Yeah, he'd, he'd been sent out on loan. I of think course. it was Northampton or, or, yeah. or one of the teams in League One or League Two. And yeah, I didn't. I honestly didn't see the, the progress that that he's made. He's 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 a real handful. He's an animal. He's got technique. He's penalties best penalty taker in the world. He scored free kick the other day. His hold up play is yeah. strong. He's got character. He's literally got everything. So no, mm-hmm. it'd be interesting to actually see him in these in these couple of games and see how he fares. Obviously, he hasn't got much time to impress the, the, the manager before this World Cup. He went to loads of teams on loan while he was mm. at Newcastle and uh, 
I guess in a way, when that happens and you don't really get the opportunity, you feel like you deserve at a club. Um, you've you've got that little fire in your belly, haven't you? And he's kind of come through all those different teams he went out on loan to. Um, Peterborough, I'm sure when he was at Peterborough, he finished it off with a... He was top scorer of the of League One that season. Then he did the same at Brentford, didn't he, in the Championship. Mm. So yeah. kind of climbing up those ranks in that way and then getting an England call-up is a, is a great story, right? I think it's the perfect story. If, if you're coaching a kid or if you're talking to a kid, you, you don't say, look at your Wayne Rooney's or your Fia Walcott's or all of those players. You say, look at your Ivan Tony's. He, mm-hmm. he didn't make the grade at Newcastle. Yep. Had to go down the leagues, had to work his way back up and, and look where he is now. So I think he's a great example to, to any youngster coming through that, that you can make it even if you do get a few setbacks. 26 years old and, and doing it completely the opposite of Ethan Yanieri at, at Arsenal. <laughs> he's getting a stadium at 15. It's crazy, isn't it? But that's football. OK, Manchester City, they have sent their own physio out to Norway's training camp to keep an eye on Erling Haaland. Um, and apparently it was recommended by the striker himself. Now, the sports therapist's role is to maintain the daily routine that he has um, at the Etihad. I'm all for things like this, but can it cause a little bit of friction? Is there like a little um, sports therapist union where they're like, oh, not that one, he's from, he's from Manchester City, he thinks he's better than us? Oh, one million percent in the, in the physios and the sports therapists. <laughs> they will not like it one bit, I can assure you that. <laughs> would England even say, like, if it, was, if it was you and it was England, for example, mm. would, they, would there be any bounce back from that? Would they go, no, you, you're going to use our physios? Will, yeah. will the Norwegians be like, what, what's wrong with our ones? Yeah, I, from England's point of view, I don't think you could do that. Um, you couldn't do that with a nation like England. But I think Norway, no disrespect, is probably slightly different. He's, he's the superstar. He's the main man. They'd probably make exceptions for him. Um, and give him what he wants to keep him happy. So I think on this one, I don't think the Norwegian side will be too um, too fussed with, with this. I know it's an interesting one. I'm just sitting here thinking if the Norwegian midfielder from Molde, for example, just <laughs> wanted his physiotherapist to come with him. I'm just wondering how that would be received. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Did you ever, here's a question, Andrew, you might not want to answer, but did you ever feel that your physios at certain places were better than either the club's oh, physios or the, or, or, or the England, England's physios. <laughs> on, be, on, behalf of, on behalf of Andros, <laughs> that's your poorest question so far. <laughs> he's, he's, he's at the age now where he likes to be honest. He just said but, that. Uh, before he answers that question, you have, the, the physios are the most temperamental people at the club, man. <laughs> Honestly, they really are. You've got, you've got to molly coddle them and cuddle them and look after them, man. They really are. So all the best, Andros. Answer the question. Good, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe on one or two occasions there we go yeah. see sometimes and I've just heard this on the grapevine sometimes people like to use physios that aren't even part of the club that they are oh I know that yeah. they'll, they'll mm. go outside yeah, yeah, think, and, yeah. and they do that secretly right because they don't want to upset the club yeah I think I, I think most, most players do that nowadays they have their own physio it's not it's not in terms of quality it's in terms of getting the, the, the care they need whereas at the physio if you want treatment at the club sorry if you want treatment you've got half an hour to 45 minutes whereas God. some players maybe older players they need more they need an hour they need two hours so they get their treatment at the club and then they go home and they get more care more on a more global scale from, the, from their own physio Do the club get annoyed because they're like no look, we've got a programme for you we want to keep an eye on everything you're doing Yeah <laughs> Yeah there we go. That's, I told you, that's, Ali. That's probably one of the, the one of the massive biggest differences in in, in, in the last few years in the game. The, the, the way the players are looked after. I've got to say the, mm. the level of. I mean, the physios. I'm having a laugh here, but the physios and the doctors and the medical teams at football clubs now are absolutely first class. First class. Yeah. Well, they don't sound it. <laughs> <laughs> Talk sport breakfast with Laura Woods, Monday to Wednesday morning, six till ten. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.